Hello, everyone. My name is Alondra Rosario Salas, and I am an undergraduate archaeology student at the University of Puerto Rico at Rio Piedras. During summer 2021, I was part of the National Science Foundation's research experience for undergraduates exploring globalization through archaeology. This internship was hosted by Texas State University in San Marcos and led by archaeologist Dr. Todd Allman and bioarchaeologist Dr. Ashley McCowan, who guided me through the process of developing this research topic. Welcome to my presentation titled Mortality and Calamity, Catastrophes, Death, and Burials in St. Croix. My research is centered on identifying mortality patterns in St. Croix from 1897 to 1901, and the possible causes of peaks in deaths. To gather the necessary data, my team conducted above-ground archaeology in the Christian Sid Cemetery, documenting burials dating from 1888 to 1954 as part of a larger project by recording their coordinates and photographing the graves and inscriptions. The inscriptions usually include at least the name of the deceased and year of birth and death. I also transcribed the death and burial notices for the Christian Seed Cemetery, published in the St. Croix Avis newspaper throughout my time frame. These could include date of death, name, age, occupation, birthplace, and place of death. But this last one was usually when it, it was a death in an estate, a hospital, or a prison. Using both sources, I gathered a simple a sample size of 1,629 deceased individuals. 1,626 from the death notices and three from the cemetery. Although 12 the individuals mentioned in the death notices were found in the cemetery. From the 1,629 individuals, 163 had no age available and there was no way to estimate it from the information provided in the newspaper or the burial, resulting in a final sample of 1,466 individuals when age is necessary. With the data gathered, I created several charts, starting with this one, which shows deaths by month through the five-year time frame selected. This chart, allows us to visualize the mortality patterns and identify peaks in deaths. As you can see, I will focus on three peaks, March, 1898, October, November, 1899, and July, August, 1900. First, I will discuss the October, November, 1899 peak. That red line marks the passing of the San Siriaco hurricane through the Caribbean. While the months directly following the hurricane do not reflect the spike, October and November 1899 show a significant increase in deaths. Before I continue to explain the consequences of hurricanes, I want to show you San Siriaco's trajectory and how close it passed to St. Croix. The red arrow points to the approximate location of the island. According to NOAA, the hurricane went over Fredericksted, the second largest town in St. Croix, located in the west side of the island. A New York Times article from August 9, 9 1899, mentions that the hurricane made landfall on August 7, destroying almost every estate on the island. It also says that the buildings were unroofed, stock was killed, and 11 laborers were killed. Some of the deaths were mentioned on the death notices for the Fredericksted Cemetery, this town being the most affected by the hurricane. Although only 11 deaths were officially attributed to the hurricane, I estimate that the number is possibly higher if we account deaths caused by the long-term effects of the hurricane. Hurricanes cause a lot of destruction and can prevent imported goods from getting to the island. As a Puerto Rican who lived through the Hurricane Maria in 2017 and its ongoing effects, I can attest to the many lives that were lost even months after the hurricane was gone due to lack of access to electrical power, portable water, 
medicines and medical help and safe shelter. Besides all these situations, one of the most dangerous things after a hurricane is the rubble. Water can accumulate in the rubble, creating a perfect environment for mosquitoes to breed, possibly leading to an outbreak of mosquito-borne diseases. Mosquito-borne diseases are those spread through mosquitoes, as the name suggests. You might have heard of some of these diseases, so, such as dengue fever, yellow fever, and malaria. As it was previously mentioned, mosquitoes need sanding water to reproduce, which can accumulate in the rubble left behind by hurricanes. This means that outbreaks of these diseases usually happen in rainy and drought season. This might come as a surprise since drought season is characterized by a lack of rain and therefore water. But when people store water for the drought season, if it is not sealed properly, mosquitoes may use it as a breeding ground. Since the Caribbean has two rainy seasons from mid-April to mid-June and late August to late November, and a summer drought from mid-June to late August, St. Croix is vulnerable to outbreaks of mosquito-borne diseases about half of the year, which has been evident through the numerous outbreaks the island has gone through in the last few centuries. This is important because as presented on the diagram, two of the peaks studied fall during times when mosquito-borne diseases could have thrived, establishing a possible association between an outbreak and the increase in deaths. As a way of further studying the mortality patterns, I used a life table to create a few charts. Life tables are commonly used in bioarchaeology to research paleodemography, which is the study of the demography of ancient populations. While their use with skeletal remains is a bit controversial, the results with data gathered from historical sources and gravestones are much more accurate. We see that men and women died at a similar rate, to calculate this, I estimated gender from societal norms associated with specific naming conventions when gender was not specified or evident from titles such as Miss or Mister. The other three charts are the results of the life table, which show proportion of deaths, survivorship, and life expectancy. The proportion of deaths show that almost 25% of deaths belong to the infants, less than a year old. However, there is a notable decrease in deaths in children between five and 19 years old. This means that if a child survived their first year of life, their chances of dying decrease significantly, even more so if they live to five years old. Survivorship presents the odd of an individual surviving a certain age. This chart so it's a plateau between individuals five to 24 years old, meaning that their chances of dying during those ages were lower. Finally, the age expectancy chart presents results similar to those of the survivorship. Ages one through 19 having the highest life expectancy with a steady decrease from there on. In general, the main aspect these charts demonstrate is that from 1897 to 1901, Christians said had high infant, infant mortality rates. As with any investigation, there are some limitations. First, the quantity of deaths may be incomplete because the St. Croix Avis missed a few names and many graves in the cemetery had damaged ins inscriptions that could not be read. In the future, I would like to access official death records to ensure complete and definite results. Also, online information about the history of St. Croix is limited, so finding mention of minor events that may have affected the mortality patterns was difficult. I expect to continue this research, maybe even incorporating mortuary treatment into the study. Well, I hope you have found this topic interesting. If you have any questions, comments, or would like to find out more about what my REU team was up to in St. Croix, feel free to email me at the shown address or visit the following website. Thank you for listening and make sure to check out the other projects my peers have worked on by visiting the Society for Historical Archaeology's YouTube site. Have a nice day.